Tak skúste sa ispýtať, čo vás počuje. OK. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, Bea. Could you hear us? Good evening. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, great. Everything is fine. Hopefully everybody can, can hear us, also the students. Uh, there are still not enough of them, so we will, we will wait some more okay. uh, minutes. Sure. Together, uh, like to have a bigger audience <laughs> uh, online. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I was just, uh, I, I hope that, that now the info is not that bad as it was when we had made our first trial. I, I am sorry, now at, uh, I sound, I, I okay. can tell we you can that. Hear we you can hear you perfectly. perfectly. As well. Yeah, it's again. Okay. okay, okay, great. So let's. Let's have uh, some more um, some more minutes and then we can start, okay? Vedeli, hej, že to bude Jasné, online, že dobre, s tým to avizované. Bože, je to všade. That's fine. Do you think that I should run downstairs to see if they are not setting an hour? We don't have time to do that, no. This was merely a joke, but anyway. <laughs> Okay, I, I mean, we will not wait uh, more uh, more time and, uh, and not to waste your time, uh, dear Bea. Uh, so uh, let me welcome, welcome you once again to our series on uh, Hungarian architecture scene, uh, Reflections on Architecture 2022. I'm very, very happy that you accepted our invitation 
and then uh, we can hear uh, some of your remarks and comments on the work of the of the plant uh, architect architecture office. Um, I already have introduced you uh, during our introductory lecture, so I will not talk uh, more about your work and your personality, only to add that uh, you are uh, one of the founders of the, of the studio and, uh, and uh, we are lucky to have you uh, here for our today's uh, lecture. So, Bea, uh, please. Uh, it's your turn now, and I'm going to start with your presentation. We are looking forward to Yes, thank you. Thank you for the invitation, for well, this kind of invitation for this uh, lecture series. It's an honor to be the part of it. And uh, tonight I would like to introduce you our uh, architecture studio plant, uh, Atelier Peter Kisch, which I joined many, many years ago. Uh, and since then, so when um, I joined the studio, when I was at my first year at the University of Moholinaj Arts and Design, and uh, since then I'm still the part of the member of the studio. And uh, through these uh, two many years, um, during these two many years, um, through a lot of uh, several unbuilt and unbuilt projects, I became one of the chief architects of the studio. And uh, the other one, the chief chief architect and uh, the founder, the owner, and um, the managing director of the studio is Peter Kirsch. So uh, now I would like to uh, introduce you a lot, at, uh, a little bit about the history of our studio and after some uh, projects. So now I, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, does it work? Yes, yes, it works perfectly. Right, thank you. So, um, uh, it started um, many, many years ago, the history of the, uh, of the of our studio when Peter, Peter Kish, um, recently graduated at the university and he was so lucky that he got a commission from the Budapest Zoo. Um, the, the project was that he had to make plans for the for the Kata Monkey House. Uh, that was a very small uh, 12 square meter shelter for the ring-tailed lemurs. Maybe you know more as the King Julian uh, from the Madagascar penguins. Uh, so it um, it didn't get any prize, and um, unfortunately, it was, it was later demolished. But um, but at least Peter, as a young architect, had the uh, an own build project um, uh, in his life. <laughs> and uh, some years later, uh, he got uh, some other um, uh, project from this, uh, from the Budapest Zoo. So this, at, this, at that point, um, a new cooperation started between him and, uh, and the Budapest Zoo. Uh, so later, in some years later, he got another very, very nice project uh, commission in the zoo. It was the Zoo Botanical Gardens Bonsai Pavilion. Uh, the character of this building was that it was a non-building. Non uh, he just wanted to make uh, separate elements um, that uh, somehow shelter and protect these uh, small bonsai uh, trees. Uh, and his next um, um, Commission. His next project was a meditation pavilion um, at, the, at the same place in the Japanese garden, and he got uh, for the for the bonsai pavilion a Piranesi award. Um, and um, the continuing the history of the of the Budapest Zoo, um, it was built at the end of the 19th century, and. Um, and the whole territory of the of the garden and the zoo contains several listed buildings and monumental buildings uh, that was um, designed by the best known uh, Hungarian arts and crafts architects. Uh, and one of these houses is this one: is the house of the 
uh, of the tick skins, or in the Latin word, the pechimus. Uh, the tick skin um, the animals are the rhinos, the hippopotamus, and uh, the elephants. And um, the first place of our studio was this tower, that Peter rented this tower, uh, but obviously it was a, a single person studio because only he fits into this room. And um, at that time, the, his, um, his one person studio's logo was uh, the four uh, project with architecture view of, uh, of a hippopotamus. Um, and um, so some years later, two other architects joined uh, him and uh, then he established his studio with the name of uh, Atelier Peter Kish. And um, then the studio moved to a little bit bigger space. Um, uh, and when I joined them, they worked uh, in the India house, uh, but was uh, in the attic of the lion's cage. So we worked uh, above these uh, great animals uh, every day. Um, and uh, our studio spent almost 20 years um, uh, in the in the zoo garden, I mean, like uh, workspaces, uh, because we rented always uh, several <laughs> buildings there. Um, we we moved into bigger and bigger bigger spaces when the how the our, our studio grew, uh, but finally we grew so big that we needed to move uh, the studio to the city. But um, of course, it was a nice period in our life to walk. Uh, every day uh, along this um, uh, these very nice animals and buildings. Um, so after this period, the commission followed, and we were part of an almost twenty years uh, cooperation between the studio and the Budapest Zoo. And during this during this period, uh, we had a lot of uh, very nice projects. Prepared, uh, we prepared reconstructions and renovation plans, but as well original uh, design and concepts. Uh, the one of them was um, this um, uh, Great Rock project um, in 2011. Um, the, this, this project um, is a kind of reuse project, but it, it doesn't seem like an old building, but it is. Uh, it's a 100-year-old building, the Great Rock, that's placed in the middle of the of the zoo. Uh, it was uh, built at the beginning of the of the 20th century uh, as, um, as an artificial rock. Uh, and uh, the, the former director of the zoo, the Adolf Land, was um, his idea was to make this artificial rock because this the, the Budapest Zoo is in the middle uh, of uh, almost in the downtown, so it's surrounded there um, um, from residential uh, era. So it the zoo is always lack of spaces, so they needed somehow to to extend um, extend the space. So then they found. Um, this idea to make an artificial um, rock uh, uh, that's a um, very nice engineering uh, engineering construction. Uh, and after, um, you see uh, on this image that uh, this one is um, uh, is the inner structure of the of this artificial rock. Um, it's um, from concrete, reinforced concrete. Uh, structure that's covered with um, a thin layer uh, of cement, and um, the inner part, the belly, is is empty. So um, during this hundred year or during this hundred year, the 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 weather, the ice, and the, the water uh, demolished this uh, this structure, this building. So after hundred year, we need to we need to to be renovated. And um, uh, beside the renovation, a new idea came up uh, that the zoo wanted to um, to attract the visitors during the winter time as well. And um, they 
uh, came up with the concept of a new zoological museum inside, uh, what was originally the idea of the former director, but then the, the war, the, the First World War, and then uh, the lack of funds uh, um, didn't uh, let him to realize this um, idea. So our studio uh, was charged to uh, make design plans for this zoological museum and also the reconstruction of, um, of the rock. Um, as you see, the mountain um, is, uh, you see the, here the, this very nice uh, construction, this reinforced construction that consists of uh, beams, uh, pillars, and uh, on the top, this, uh, this shell from, uh, from cement, and um, uh, it's reinforced um, with, uh, with a kind of net. Uh, and um, the function uh, of, the, of the rock was um, that these contained uh, cages originally for lions and bears and tigers, but there are small bays here, like this one, um, for the animals. Uh, on the top, there are some panoramic runs for the animals, and, um, and then they invented the system of the moats. Uh, that's um, that's a kind of uh, a very deep and uh, and wide uh, hole in the ground where you don't need fences between the visitors and the animals. But that was a novelty at that time, so uh, it makes um, a very natural look of the animals how they uh, live um, on the surfaces of the of the rocks, and um, and there was uh, also uh, roots for the. Uh, for the visitors uh, in the cracks of the rock, like this one. So people could go through to the uh, rock and to, to enjoy the, the panoramic uh, view of it. Uh, and so this, um, this rock uh, was originally, 100 years ago, reproduced the, 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 real, the formation of a real limestone, limestone mountain. Uh, um, that can be found in Transylvania. So the engineers went to, to, uh, went to Transylvania. They found a nice Dolomit uh, summit. Uh, they made, made survey and then after reproduced it um, exactly with the same measure as, the, as they found this peak in Transylvania. And um, uh, after this, we can say that uh, it's a kind of... Um, uh, outstanding architectural uh, heritage. Um, okay, so uh, to start the design, uh, we need uh, we need to survey the this very nice structure um, because um, not too much um, architectural drawings um, can be found at that time um, and. Um, uh, that, so, so we found a very talented group of um, a team of uh, computer scientists and alpinists and uh, cave explorers who who could make this survey uh, in the winter in the belly of this uh, of this mountain uh, that sometimes um, went the the uh, Celsius sometimes went um, below minus twenty, um, but. These engineers developed a um, um, three-dimensional computer system that give uh, every, to each beam, they give a kind of geographic database and uh, um, that could describe its condition and geometric characteristics. So it's a kind of like a beam uh, today, but at that time it was, um, uh, it was a novelty thing. So then we could use uh, that for the for the design uh, phase, but uh, so that this um, this cold weather uh, meant as well that um, we have to make for the exhibition uh, a kind of uh, closed space that can be uh, heatable. Um, so 
Our task was to find that something, a kind of system that, uh, that can be inside in this huge uh, rock, but, uh, but at the same time, the structure, this very nice structure can be visible or we can keep it uh, visible. So we wanted to react or sensitively highlight this, the wonders of, of this main structure elements that supports this uh, great rock. And then finally, we, we came up with the idea of this uh, origami-like um, layer uh, that we can put between the, the shell, the, the cement shell of the rock, and between the, the, the reinforced, um, uh, the reinforced concrete uh, structure. Uh, and we thought that the, the result uh, became a very exciting and playful and uh, barrier-free space that's multi-purpose. So the zoo can use it as a, uh, as a space for some cultural um, events and uh, exhibitions. Uh, and as the space is, um, so the, the coldness of the space comes from the lack of, uh, of the natural light. Um, because only, there was only some skylights and some holes that can uh, go through the natural light. Um, so we, we make this origami-like um, shell uh, with the kind of... Um, concept to get this, to catch uh, some lights from the, from the outside uh, uh, era. Uh, and then um, another very nice thing um, could happen. Um, we knew that the, this structure was built uh, on a marshy ground. Uh, a very wetland, so it has a very deep foundation of uh, the supporting structure, has a very deep uh, foundation, so that allowed uh, us to make, um, to excavate a whole level under the, this structure, under the body, uh, and uh, in, this, um, in this totally new level, um, we can increase the internal volume of the of the exhibition. So the topic of the exhibition became the the and the sea uh, the the levels under the sea. Uh, so now, oh, oh, sorry, uh, here you can see this um, this origami like structure that. Um, 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 so, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, so the, these are two, you can see two parts of this origami-like structure. One closed, enclosed uh, envelope um, space and mass here, and the other one is here. Uh, and um, um, here, the other part of the drawing shows the original shell of the rock, mm -hmm. so we try to um, to use these adjacent spaces between the two uh, structure, like uh, uh, looking through the, the inner spaces, and there are two: this the third one and the fourth spaces of the uh, of the great rock uh, are very nice. Um, uh, <laughs> spaces of the rock, the original spaces. Uh, so we didn't want to close it with any shells, uh, but we wanted to keep it in its original appearance, like this one. This is the central space and um, the parabolic space. So we just only uh, designed the renovation of the shell of the, of the rock and the, the, the structures. Uh, renovation and um, the visitors can go can come out from the from this inside from these closed spaces um, to make the, to see the greatness of uh, of this parabolic space. Uh, here you can see the the excavation uh, of the of this uh, underground 
uh, level. And um, at that point, another uh, very interesting uh, problem came up. It is that the original site, the original uh, size of the building is more than 4,000 square meter. Uh, and the new um, inside the uh, exhibition spaces uh, are also more than 2,000. Um, so as these are really very cold uh, spaces, the inside, we have to somehow heat uh, the new exhibition spaces. And um, uh, there a, a very economical uh, idea came up from the designer team. It's a very innovative solution that fits very well to the ZOO's mission to be um, economically uh, conscious and environmental, environmentally sustainable. It is that uh, next to the ZOO, there is the Seicheni Spa that has a, a great treasure, the Therma water, uh, that is a really a hot spring water. Uh, and the Seicheni Spa, uh, he used a lot of fossil energy to cool it down because it's so hot before they, um, they uh, let them um, go into the bathroom pools. So we found the idea that maybe through a heating exchange system, uh, we can solve their problem. So we can heat uh, this hot spring water that can heat the spaces, the interior spaces of the Great Rock, of the new exhibition spaces. But then after they could receive the cooled uh, water and can let uh, go into the, uh, into the pools. Uh, you, you can see um, again this um, nice parabolic space and some lighting uh, traps that I mentioned uh, before. Uh, and here uh, some features of this new um, origami-like um, uh, structure. So we thought that um, that uh, the two system the structure, the original structure, the beams and the pillars, and the origami-like shell uh, have to um, make a new system in the space. And there are two ways uh, how we act with these two elements, two architectural tools. Um, the one element was when um, so, okay, so during the survey that we got from the engineer team, uh, we realized that there is no any parallel pillars or beams in the structure. So that means that if we would like to make a continuous uh, shell uh, around the space, a heated space, uh, we have to make uh, triangle polygons. So this... Um, resulted in the origami-like uh, uh, shell. Sorry. And the first, um, first result, the first uh, solution was uh, to push uh, this origami shell into the interior. Um, and that's the first solution when, we, when you can see the original structure of the building only see these smooth uh, surfaces from polygons. And the other solution, when there is a kind of hierarchy between the original structure, the pillars and these, and between uh, this origami-like shell. And always, in this case, we always wanted to, to emphasize the original structure and to put in the second place the origami-like shell. I could still like understand. Um, that, and and this the same uh, solution uh, was like used uh, in the flooring. So here you can see a little bit the original beams. So where where we can make a smooth flooring surface, we did. But sometimes um, it happened that uh, some beams were above or under the level of the flooring. And then some terraces uh, formed, created. Uh, and the third element of the design was the, the original shell of the 
uh, of the artificial rock. Uh, this is the cement shell of the rock uh, that um, was also renovated. Uh, so sometimes it get very, we can get very mysterious, nice exhibition spaces. So we used for this the in-between spaces that's on the side of the origami-like shell and on the side of the of this artificial rock. Uh, and the former director, Han Van and with year ago, his dream was this to hang uh, in the parabolic space a huge <laughs> skeleton <laughs> of a whale, of real, real skeleton. Uh, but then one hundred years later, uh, part of this uh, of this dream came true. Yeah, it looks like a whale. And uh, um, after the project, the, um, we got uh, for that the Ecomos Prize that, um, that goes to the architects who make, open, make nice um, listed buildings, reconstructions. Uh, okay, I would like to stay uh, on the side of the reused project. This is an unbuilt project of our studio uh, still, but we hope that um, in the future it will somehow uh, be built because we really like uh, this project. Uh, this is the Fono Budai Buddha Music Hall, a music house. Uh, that's, um, the, this is a cultural house that he, their mission is to keep the Hungarian folk music alive and to put uh, them into the digital age and uh, to introduce the folk music to the people of Budapest. Uh, and um, with hundreds of people regularly attending into their dance houses, uh, there is the famous Kono Wednesday uh, that became an, um, itself a concept of this house. Uh, and at the same time, it hosts not just okay. folk music, but world music, <laughs> jazz concerts, sometimes photo exhibitions and, uh, like and wine tasting uh, uh, events. Uh, the, the founder of, um, of this cultural house uh, is a businessman uh, who comes from the alternative music era of the 1990s. He had a non um, alternative uh, music band, but then later he became a businessman. Uh, he has um, a medical equipment factory uh, in the brass zone of Budapest. Uh, so he wanted to create a place uh, that would uh, provide a very worthy environment for uh, this kind of musical gems. Uh, that were at that time only welcomed in uh, cultural houses and in theaters uh, in the alternative world. And um, he had um, this medical equipment factory here in this, um, um, in this zone, in this red zone of Budapest. Um, so after a time, he decided to rent first and then after to buy an abandoned uh, factory <laughs> and uh, his intention was to uh, to transform it into this um, cultural uh, space. Um, and there is another very nice feature of this Pono Buddha house that they, um, since its foundation, they, uh, they gathered um, Hungarian folk uh, musics and dance dances uh, through albums and uh, videos, and uh, and finally they got it. Uh, they gave it into the uh, Hungarian Institute of of, of Musicology. Um, so this uh, this feature, uh, this uh, this goal, needs um, a little bit of a bigger space than at the same time than than now they have um, uh, in the city. Um, So um, this is a this is a typical uh, former industrial industrial plant or factory that um, normally cultural institutions can 
um, can buy and can transform uh, into it in an international uh, stage. Uh, and the reuse of these RAS zone buildings uh, always search for new functions and they uh, always find some kind of cultural function. It is, uh, it is due, to the, due to some reasons. The first is that there is a really huge uh, or wide span uh, of the structures. For this building, uh, we have a 10 meter uh, span uh, of the structure. That's very good for events and spaces uh, and stages for of theaters, for example. Uh, the second is the huge open spaces. Uh, and the third one is the, the, the far distance from the residential uh, environment. Um, so this building, we have two of these features, the, the 10, uh, 10 meter span and the, the, the open spaces, but it's um, uh, unfortunately the urbanization started around uh, the building. So that meant at that time that we have to uh, make the design um, according um, to this feature, to this close uh, residential era uh, feature, um, because uh, this phono musical um, has to be host, has host um, professional music events and dance events, but uh, has to make a very nice and very professional uh, acoustic insulation between the residential era and between the, between the events. Uh, this original building is a gable frame, uh, reinforced concrete uh, pillars, the industrial whole structure. Um, and the, the phono the auditoriums are therefore uh, designed to take into account the existing spans and the pillar spacing. Uh, but at the same time, we have to preserve this original supporting structure almost in its um, in, in entirety. Um, and the, from, from the, this point of, uh, from the point of view of the venue design, um, we have to find uh, a kind of layer that can be um, also an insulation, an acoustic insulation, and, um, um, and a kind of new uh, facade, a new surface uh, on, the, on this uh, industrial building. So to achieve this, um, there is a kind of disadvantage of, um, of, the, of the factory buildings. That's the, the messy uh, surfaces, that's a lack of uh, windows. Uh, that serves very good for the machines, but not good for the human and for the people. So we, we proposed a totally new facade for the for the building uh, after demolishing the original um, uh, facade of the of the factory and to make this new shell um, a thermal and an acoustic insulation as well. Uh, the current facade has um, reinforced concrete panels. They have um, glazed uh, windows and uh, glass brick, bricks, but outdated glass bricks that has no any uh, insulation features. Um, so we proposed to totally replace the old facade into a new one, but we wanted to use one feature of this, uh, these uh, industrial buildings and we choose the, the glass bricks that we could find on the original original uh, house um, and to propose a totally independent and new envelope that could enclose this new cultural function uh, on the building. That is um, a kind of um, kind of membrane uh, of, um, of the building. Uh, 
and we thought that it will have a very nice geometric play uh, with using different shape and different size um, bricks, uh, like you can see from the right side. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it can make a very nice, elegant, monolithic mass uh, that can emphasize the cultural function uh, of, the, of the building. And um, then after, um, uh, we used folk art and uh, some natural motif uh, in the facade structure. Um, the aim was, uh, of this decision is that we wanted to transform some kind of craft techniques of folk traditions into a kind of architectural uh, tool. Um, so through this membrane and through this layer, we thought that uh, the interior space can be very vivid behind, um, behind this membrane. The building can be, can be vivid, can be live, a very vivid life. And uh, some lights and shadows uh, can come through this, um, this surface, but that can reflect the human movement, movement uh, inside uh, and the cultural life that takes place in the phono. Uh, but at the same time, um, that's the, the acoustic, it can make a very nice, very professional acoustic layer uh, that uh, makes a distance between the residential area and this new cultural, um, cultural function. Um, and um, the building, uh, the, the factory building, um, the original building has a very small uh, entrance. Uh, so we changed this um, feature and we thought that um, this function requires a very representative and a very nice reception area and, um, and entrance space. So we proposed a new, uh, bigger, much bigger uh, entrance space uh, to the building. And for this reason, we need to demolish um, uh, not just um, a part of the facade, but a part of the, uh, of the um, floor. Um, and we propose the new floating slab uh, into, um, into the, uh, between two uh, pillars uh, on the, into the building on the ground level and on the first level, because there are two lobbies of the event spaces. So we thought that this is the only, uh, these two um, entrance uh, is the only clear and transparent layer um, integrated into the, the woven uh, fabric, the woven facade of the building. Um, the new building uh, will house the music and the cultural institutions, uh, public and uh, service spaces. Uh, and uh, it will take place on four floors. Um, the first floor uh, will be the restaurant and the catering space, uh, which will operate independently of the other cultural spaces and will be located on this ground floor. Uh, behind the closed uh, street facade. And this will include a small stage um, here uh, that will emphasize more the representative uh, uh, feature of the, of the live music venues uh, more than the catering uh, feature of the uh, catering function of the building. Um, so this conversion, um, I mean, this trans, um, transformation, uh, we thought that it will allow the whole building to be effectively separated from the surrounding residential uh, environment. Uh, that's why we proposed um, the 
the new functions um, only on the, the new event functions only on the first floor. So the ground floor will only serve to let the people in uh, to the entrance space and then uh, encourage them to go through quickly to the first floor and to to be uh, in the on the first uh, floor in the uh, event space and the exhibition uh, space. Uh, so that's why we make a group of uh, of functions on the first floor that uh, that make from the event spaces the the stages uh, the exhibition spaces. Uh, on the first floor of the of the building, that's the event space. Um, it can can be freely adapted from the various event spaces, um, uh, thanks to some movable walls uh, of the space. And so here you can make um, event spaces, exhibition spaces, and intimate concert spaces uh, according to this adaptation to this. Using the using these mobile wooden uh, panels. So that's here the this lobby space, and on the right and on the left side, it is the the this adaptable spaces for the for some kind of events. Uh, on the second floor, we hope that this. Um, this level will allow the Phonos culture mission to run smoothly, as this uh, will contain the background uh, functions um, of the of the event uh, and culture spaces. That these uh, functions will support uh, their work uh, in the building, the culture work. Therefore, there are some offices, multifunctional spaces for any culture activities. Uh, rehearsal rooms, uh, recording studios, workshop, and um, some uh, very nice instrument repair repair workshops. Uh, the building um, was built in the 1960s um, as a ground floor plus a two-story flat roof uh, building that has this existing precast reinforced concrete pier frame structure. Uh, but after we proposed to, uh, to demolish uh, the old facade uh, system, uh, we, we suggested uh, a new system for the, uh, for the facade with these glass bricks and with a very filigrane um, uh, steel structure that will support the, um, the bricks uh, in a kind of slab that's two uh, and a half uh, meter per two and a half uh, meter. Um, and between, so this is the end of the original structure. These are the new layer, the new membrane, and we use the, um, the between space, the small uh, distance for any uh, other technical uh, features. Um, this new glass brick facade um, will serve as a communication um, between the audience and between the artists who, um, who will live inside uh, this house. Uh, we thought that the, the appearance of the tradition uh, is a kind of, uh, of a knowledge preserved in the cultural memory. So that can be uh, fundamental in the Phonos history. So that's why we thought that, um, that we can use a, a kind of folk art symbol, uh, which is a thousand year old uh, traditional symbol, the bird and and the, the tree of life uh, that's strongly connected to the people. The bird is a symbol of a soul 
uh, the immortality and the kind of uh, fertility that uh, that can uh, uh, somehow uh, reflect the persons who can who create something. Uh, so, as contrast to the preserved reinforced concrete surfaces, we use very modern materials um, and soft materials uh, that can make a pleasant, more pleasant atmosphere covering the interior spaces um, and um, these existing surfaces that can come into uh, tactile, tactile proximity with the users um, are also used. Uh, in the interior design spaces. And the other is this blue painted ornamentation that's a kind of Hungarian uh, tradition that climbs onto some surfaces uh, on the main um, um, furnitures of the building. Um, and the, the mentioned uh, acoustic reason um, resulted in a house within a house principle uh, that uh, that can make from um, from these wooden panels that will serve at the, at one hand to separate the different functions of the event uh, spaces but at the same time uh, it will serve as a, as a shade um, around, not around, uh, shades in front of the, the glass brick uh, facade. So uh, it will serve like um, um, a very smooth shell around the events. Uh, so inside the, these closed spaces, you can make dark spaces for any professional concerts and events. So the light can't come, light and the sound can't come out of the building and can come in uh, at the same time. The, there is um, another uh, feature of the house is the professional uh, dance floor. Uh, that's the we use oak wood for for this dance floor. That's another new uh, layer of the uh, of the building. And um, of course, this the maximum possible interior height. Uh, that is another feature of these old factory buildings. Um, can be used uh, in between the structures, between the new structures. So between these old structures, you can use the these wooden panels to make small or bigger volumes and proportions of the roof of the rooms. So it can be adjusted to the required sh shape of the uh, of the sliding walls, uh, and we think that there is a kind of ten tension between the raw aesthetics of these fond industrial buildings, um, mainly the reinforced concrete elements, and these finely detailed natural wood coverings um, of these special acoustic panels, um, and these two features can make a nice character of the of the old building. The rooms uh, that functions uh, as rehearsal rooms, dance halls, and even spaces during the day uh, host performances and productions in the evening. So with this principle, both day and night uh, can be used, can be a very um, vivid space uh, in the building, and thanks to this wooden spallet system of the sliding walls, we can, uh, as I said, exclude the light uh, during uh, daytime. Uh, and now, uh, I would like to show you um, and not a reuse, but uh, uh, a new project. And um, however, it was, uh, it's a little bit old. Uh, I mean, it's more than 10 years old uh, project of uh, 
a studio, we like it very much because there are very rich layers of, of the design and uh, of the building itself as well. Um, because our client uh, awareness and receptiveness um, was very, um, very unique uh, during this project. Uh, this is a winery project um, um, in Hungary, in um, uh, Badacsony, near Lake uh, Balaton, uh, in the center of the Balaton uplands, uh, the Bal Balaton wine region, that's um, very famous of, uh, um, of, of its grape and wine culture uh, in Hungary, and the area is the part of our national heritage. Uh, and the town... Um, where we have to design uh, a new processing building for a winery. It lies on uh, the skirt of uh, the Badachon mountain and uh, and as well the lake on the on the shore of the lake uh, Balaton. The the name of this winery is Basalt Wine Basalt Ball, and um, it's a family uh, family winery and it gets its name. Uh, after the characteristic of the surrounded hills, that's uh, basalt hills, um, uh, where this family harvests uh, um, every grapes and every year for their for their vines. Um, that means that um, this uh, this character, the, the basalt, uh, this mineral character reflects into the uh, into his his uh, his vines. Uh, so this was uh, previously a small uh, family winery, but then um, then their wines became um, well known amongst the Hungarian wine drinkers. So they decided to um, to enter into the market um, and to make a dynamic dynamic growth um, of this of their cellars. Uh, so they need technological and tourism era's expansion. Uh, and at that point, they found uh, our studio to make a new uh, design uh, process. Um, so the name of the, of the winery of the Laposha family, of the Bazarat Ball, it refers to this volcanic store and uh, tries to emphasize this, uh, this natural treasure the, the buzzer pillars and organs that you can see here on the top uh, of the hill. That's the characteristic of this uh, region. Um, and when we um, when we started uh, the design process, we started this uh, with a survey, with a topological and a geographical survey of the era, because we thought that um, that the mountain's history is very interesting for us. Um, just some sentences about it because uh, it was really the base, one basic element of our design. This um, basalt hill is a kind of witness hill that, uh, that the witness hills are illustrate or they, they illustrate the, the original height of the, uh, of the previously eroded era. That means that um, that this is the Lake Balaton, and um, uh, some million years ago, the whole territory um, was under the sea, under the Pannon Sea, and under the this sea there was a violent volcanic activity, uh, and the burning lava came through the cracks of the bottom of the sea, and when they came onto the surface, it uh, very soon solidified and make a very dark, very hard material. And that's the, these basalt or, um, organs and basalt flutes that's on the top of the hill. But then this hard material covered a very soft, uh, sandy layer under it. Uh, and when it covered, it resisted the wind and the ice uh, during the millions of years. And when the, this lake, the lake um, uh, went out from this era, disappeared from the era, the, the wind and the ice eroded the other part of, of, the, uh, of the territory. 
except these buzzard uh, tops, the buzzard ears. So, so we can say that uh, that's why the witness ears uh, can illustrate the original height of uh, of, a, of an era because that was uh, the top of this uh, of this buzzard um, uh, lava uh, action. Uh, so that became our one of our reference uh, to the design, because on the slopes of these hills, these uh, eroded um, basalt debris and stones um, make a mixture with the sandy soil. Uh, so these became uh, an excellent um, soil for the grapevines, for growing vines. And this hill, the Badachan hill, where we have to make this design, is the highest southern, southern witness hill uh, in this era. And sometimes um, the winemakers uh, transform these slopes into terraces uh, that contains uh, basalt retaining walls. Um, use the, the basalt stone from the top of, of the hills. So that's another uh, architecture reference of uh, uh, of our design. The the next one is the the effect of Lake uh, Balaton because it makes a a, a kind of sub, sub Mediterranean Mediterranean microclimate, <laughs> uh, and it comes from the reflection of the sun uh, on the mirror of the Lake uh, Balaton. Uh, that makes the, the this southern part of the hill uh, a very pleasant atmosphere. So it, the, the the temperature never goes uh, under zero, and the summer are not too hot. Uh, so it's very perfect for um, for the pines. Uh, and the, the basalt board's new processing building uh, was built on this territory, that's the Balaton, the part of the uh, Balaton National Park. Uh, and the estate was created by merging some uh, different plots on the, uh, on the space. Um, here, that you can see the level uh, lines of the, of the territory. And this one is the top of the hill or the side of the hill. And this is the foot of the hill and or Commission was to design a processing building uh, and another administration building and a small hotel uh, next to each other. But uh, thanks to these um, uh, plots, merging plots, uh, we had we, we could um, um, propose a design um, uh, layout where to put which function. So the the upper part um, of the hill uh, can provide a very nice panoramic view. So finally, we decided to put the administrative, the tasting building, and the hotel uh, on the side of the hill, and to propose to make the processing building uh, next to the foot uh, of the hill. But this was a question. Uh, the, beginning of the design uh, process, because the upper part um, of the territory of the plot uh, contains um, or connects more to the natural landscape uh, of the hill with the basalt uh, organs and uh, with the forests. But the, the lower part um, of the plot uh, belongs more to the city, to the town, uh, where there are only uh, small uh, separate uh, weekend houses around it. So this fundamentally rooted, rooted in its nature uh, that has to connect more with the nature of this building. And so the next um, um, thing was that we tried to connect uh, these buildings with a kind of educated, educational 
uh, vine root, and we can make a nice dramaturgical or natural uh, connection through the whole territory. And then a new uh, reference uh, came up from the characteristic of the hill. It is the archetypical form of the building's main facade uh, that can uh, that can be found on the space. These are the archetypical press houses uh, on the side of the hill. Uh, these houses um, was, was built, were built um, for home, the winemaking activities as well, and the relaxation activities uh, as well. Uh, so there is a cellar um, under the ground uh, with, a, with a very small uh, space uh, in front of the cellar that has an unchanging temperature. Uh, and the top, there is a maturation spaces that uh, the winemaking activity uh, can be made. The feature of these houses are the small scale, the simple shape, and uh, the simple structure uh, with um, a glowing white or basalt uh, surface. So finally, we thought to use this reference um, as well. Uh, and that uh, point of the design phase, uh, another question uh, arose that we didn't, um, we had to decide that what form or method can the building be managed uh, between these references, between these natural uh, references and the built uh, environment references. Uh, we thought that the, the function of the building, like this, the vine uh, making activity, connects the building more to the earth. So we decided the bond to the earth principle had to go through the whole design uh, process. So building shall take place uh, downwards along to the gravitational principle that comes from the winemaking uh, process. Uh, and we need to make the functional uh, system around this gravitational system that I will uh, show you later on the, on the sections. Um, so at the same time, at that time, we had some references. We had the hexagonal uh, idealistic shape of the basalt organs and flutes. And uh, we have these archetypical press house uh, surfaces and shapes that we wanted to use and to put together into one uh, system. And the basalt retaining walls that can be found on the side of the, of the hill. Um, so on this basis, we thought that we cannot act like regular architectures. We cannot use regular architecture tools, forms, and uh, structures, um, and clear architectonic uh, tools uh, in, this, um, in this situation. But we cannot totally reject them or entirely reject these tools. So we wanted to propose a new type of language uh, that we can um, derive from these uh, two elements, the natural elements and the built uh, element. So we, we decided to make the building like uh, a model. So this became a principle during the design process that we have to act and we have to see all building like, uh, like a model that can use different type of ab abstractions, like the hexagonal abstraction, like the archetypical abstraction, and uh, some more. Uh, so the, in the geometric model, uh, we have two basic elements, the symmetric gable closed roof abstraction of these press houses, and the hexagonal shaped uh, cross-sections cross -sections of these basalt pillars. Um, so the building finally 
started to act like like act like the the basalt when the basalt bands erupted to the surface from the ground underground uh, and it can go freely or run freely in any di directions it can sometimes meet and join to each other or sometimes uh, separated to each other uh, and when it goes onto the surface or onto the roof uh, it makes a kind of distortion uh, surfaces uh, and to to make this principle uh, be alive we decided to make a monolithic uh, appearance uh, of the building where we didn't um, make distinction between the roofs and the facades, but uh, act like a huge monolithic mass. And for this reason, we used a uh, precast from, um, concrete panel elements. Um, so the building uh, contains two different things. Uh, one is the technological wing um, of the Winery. And here you can see that only a one-story building are above the ground. Um, but it uh, follows the gravitational system of the winemaking um, activity. Uh, so when the berries come onto the ground uh, level, yeah, and uh, go uh, down the ends uh, at the bottom of the building, and through these three levels, um, from the grape, uh, wine will be at the end of the process. And then this one is the, uh, the vertical uh, transportation system when the wine can come up to the surface again at the end of the process and can go uh, into the uh, market. And the second, uh, the other wing, of the um, of the um, uh, structure of the of the mass uh, is a barrel um, wing um, for the red vines, um, and in front uh, there is a welcoming building for the visitors uh, who are very interested in the winemaking uh, process. Uh, so about the, uh, the pattern, um, because at that point when we had, we formed the mass and the function of the building, a new reference came up uh, on, the, on the plot, because we thought that this grant to the earth uh, principle need some more tools. And then after some research, we found uh, the this um, climbing and winding pattern of the grapevines that we decided to put it on the concrete and metal panels in a one-to-one -one, um, proportion. Um, and this helped us to land the uniqueness um, of the old facade. So following the principle of the building has to be like a model. Um, as I told, the differentiation of the of the facade F and the, the roof uh, are missing. And um, we covered the whole um, building into the same prefabricated fine concrete facing uh, panels. Um, when, and when, when we needed some light, uh, into the to let some light into the building, then we replaced uh, these concrete panels with light structures of glass claddings and the perforated metal uh, sheets. That also pulling it together uh, a unified surface from the from the outside. And there another ornament uh, uh, can be found in the inside. Uh, on the longitudinal nature of the barrel shape uh, that's um, a bit uh, cracked uh, on the layout um, is a shape 
has a shape of a traditional cellar, but it's broken uh, and it's um, it is made of reinforced concrete as the part of the model. So it's not uh, not like a tectonic um, uh, barrel. Uh, so that's why is because it's a reinforced concrete. Uh, we wanted to put some covering on the inside, but uh, we didn't want to, let's say, lie uh, with the tectonic uh, uh, pattern of uh, brick layers. So we finally uh, thought that we can make this uh, as a woven fabric onto the surface uh, of, the, of the barrels. Um, the landscape construction around the building were aimed to ensure the proper functional service of the of this plant and to fit the site into the wider landscape. As you can see, it's, it has a really big construction. And uh, besides the, uh, the reconstruction of the soil around the building, some uh, newly planted grapevines and, uh, and some lavender fields were, were planted that um, after some years became um, a very nice surface around the buildings. Um, and um, as uh, this uh, building is a workplace for workers who use it every day, day by day, as, especially during the harvesting period, they had to spend hours um, in the belly of the hill um, on the minus second level. So we thought that the natural light uh, is a very exceptional feature of the building. So when it's needed, uh, we made, we designed large openings with glazed windows that we covered with the same pattern uh, shadings um, of the um, of the grapevine pattern um, um, on the um, on the concrete panels, and um, some unexpected uh, effects of the surrounded environment uh, that come on the on the projected uh, the white surfaces of the buildings. The shades of the um, of the surrounding uh, trees and plants, and uh, just some words about this pattern, uh, because uh, we thought that that um, this uh, relatively large scale building, the factory, makes a mass production of uh, of vines. Uh, however. The mine making uh, activity is a kind of a sacral activity uh, that uh, belongs more to the manufacturer character of uh, of the wine mix, wine making activities. So we thought that this is a kind of tension between these two um, um, activity that we can transform into architecture. So we thought that the panels on the surface uh, are a kind of mass production because we had to design um, uh, some hundred uh, panels. But at, at the same time, we wanted to make this as a kind of manufacturing uh, effect, uh, to show some manufacturing effect on it, and to make uh, a unique like uh, pattern on the surface. So after uh, some um, research, uh, we find out a system that uh, uh, seemingly not a grid-like system, but it is. So if you see the joints on, the, for example, these panels, uh, if you see the joints on both sides, it's a horizontal uh, panel, both vertically and horizontally. Uh, symmetric, sorry, it's a symmetric panel, both horizontally and vertically. Uh, so you can see that on every um, every joint is symmetric onto the other side, from right to left and from down to up. But the inner part of the 
uh, of the panel became very um, interesting and uh, exciting. But that means that we had to design only 20 uh, different panel and uh, you can turn every panel and you can join every panel to each other because it, can, it joins on the same um, um, spot um, of, the, of the panel size. But here with this system, we can make very unique like uh, pattern like here, for example, here we make plain uh, surfaces uh, on that part and we make um, these patterned surfaces. Uh, and the interiors, um, we use the original uh, reinforced concrete uh, structures, surfaces uh, everywhere. So when we have to, um, to to add something, it's always on the outside, so it's always separated and assembled, uh, like you can see here on the surfaces of this reinforced concrete. Um, and the furnitures or the equipments are uh, only very rough and technological, lighting fixtures, stainless steel elements, uh, like the, the, the fences. Um, and here um, you can see some pictures uh, at night because during the harvesting period uh, the workers work day, work day at night uh, so the, the lighting uh, of the building is also an important factor uh, and here um, you can see some image uh, of the of this white press house uh, surfaces uh, glowing uh, on the side of the hill. And here uh, to prove the uniqueness of these two uh, elements. Uh, okay, I think I have one more project, but I think that the time is um, 7.20. So as this is a as another long um, project, I think that if you want or if you choose, I can uh, I can stop now. Well, uh, we have still like a half an hour, but, uh, but um, I mean, <laughs> uh, if we want to leave at least some minutes for for discussion, so perhaps it would be. I don't know how many how many projects you still have there. Only one. This is the last one. Oh, okay, so let's uh, let's uh, hear what what you have to say about the last one, and then we have still some minutes for questions. So I, I mean, it's okay like this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I just would like to be uh, sure. Uh, so this is um, our last build project of uh, of our studio. It's a swimming pool uh, facilities in the it's in the suburban uh, era of uh, Buda. The, that is uh, the the part of uh, the greeny part of uh, of Budapest, and uh, these public facilities um, consist of multiple pools. Uh, that's for different um, uh, features for uh, neighboring schools for water polo trainings and uh, international swimming uh, competitions. Uh, it was the aim of the uh, of the of the swimming pool. And uh, the the habitants of the of these districts uh, waited for this building for a really long time. And uh, the area is located in the very nice in one of the the, the, the most beautiful pan panoramic district uh, of uh, Buda. And the plot is located on a very gentle slope of these hills uh, and surrounded uh, again residential buildings um, uh, with family houses. And due to this fact, the building can be clearly seen uh, from these uh, um, residential houses. So we couldn't design a block, a huge block that dominates the landscape with its mass. Um, so for, for this reason, uh, we used them as a mass concept or as a mass design, 
two geometric units that articulate this, the main volume. Uh, one is the barrel vaulted space uh, above the competition pool and around it the L-shaped form of the service areas. And some uh, glass uh, surfaces uh, opens this uh, monolithic volume and some fluted uh, surfaces. Um, and the context uh, also required uh, an apparent lower building, uh, which by not forming a huge cubic mass is uh, realized uh, with this uh, one story uh, service um, uh, mass around the, the barrel vaulted space. Um, Um, and we thought at the beginning of the design that there is a kind of public uh, of um, during designing public buildings. Uh, we thought that people always get lost in the crowd uh, buildings when they have no uh, the ability to find their way uh, around. So as this public building has a relatively large size and mass, we wanted to implement very simple and very clear communication using the spaces. Um, using the spaces, the materials, uh, the systems, and uh, the, the colors of the building. Uh, there is the, this facility contains a covered 50 per 25 uh, meters long course pool. It has two grandstands on both sides, and the pool can be divided into uh, to uh, simultaneous space for uh, professional training and for the visitors uh, as well. And uh, further uh, through these openings, uh, you can see the outdoor uh, pool. Uh, again, uh, it's a professional uh, pool for training and for uh, competitions. And there is another um, pool, uh, 20 per 10 meters, it's an educational pool that will serve as a need of the schools uh, of the surrounded area. And there is another facility for um, for the um, uh, supporters for this is a wellness bar that complete the visitors experience. Um, so the spatial arrangement of the uh, of the masses um, that we had, we developed the central visual axis of the space, um, providing a vista throughout the old building, uh, from the foyer, uh, with the view of the of the comp competition pool, and with the view behind um, the outdoor uh, pool, also in the far background. Uh, and um, it was very important for us to focus on uh, the views uh, during the design, um, as well as the relationship between the openings and the main axis uh, of the space. Um, so we created a kind of uh, dramaturgy of the uh, transportation uh, of the of the space. Uh, here. You can see this axis uh, emphasized uh, on the layout, um, and um, this is the whole building. When the, um, uh, the lobby, where you can see the entrance space uh, inside, uh, or this is the top view of the building, of course, but then uh, the end of the axis, that is the outer pool. And here's the inside, uh, the, the ground uh, floors layout. Um, here is this, uh, this axis with the large openings uh, that follows this principle. And um, this, is, this one is the L-shaped service block that um, uh, lies around uh, this uh, huge pool. And um, these functions uh, are connected with, to the axis with uh, another transparent uh, layer. So we thought 
uh, during this principle that uh, that it will be so simple that uh, that it can uh, help the orientation of the people uh, in the space with these large uh, openings in front uh, of the building and in the back of the building as well. And plus we have a mezzanine uh, floor for the VIP visitors uh, and they have a known um, a gallery, a known outside uh, gallery uh, at the back of the of the building. And uh, here you can see also the axis uh, of the building uh, with the view of the main pool and the view of the uh, of the back, the out uh, the outside pool. Uh, plus the concept of the interior design is that is based on the distinction between the, the dirty and the clean spaces. So as the lobby space um, uh, is the part of these dirty spaces uh, that can have this um, elegance, uh, dark um, gray color and uh, materials. And the, um, inside the, uh, you can see the, the white and clean surfaces uh, that's around the pools, uh, the, the azure uh, blue pools. And it has the kind of contrast. Uh, it's again the orientation uh, purpose of the building. Um, the, 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 this one is also the, the foyer, the entrance uh, of the building um, where you can see that only built furnitures are the part of the interior design. Uh, it is the concept of the durability of the materials and the furnitures and every acquired um, objects uh, of the building. Um, the elegance of the dark interiors is strengthened by the sun brass accessories and uh, uh, some nice graphic uh, signage uh, in the same color, the brass uh, color. And uh, this is this one is another um, principle, the another concept that uh, comes from uh, the waving uh, of the of the facade of the flutes. Uh, this is the circle, uh, some circle shapes, furnitures, and the circle shape mosaics uh, on the wall. Um, here we made the same um, to the same method as we used in the winery when we cut the hexagonal shape uh, and we got the shape, the section of the house. So we cut the these circles, then we cut, uh, then we get the uh, this foot, the wavy. Um, surface of the um, facades. Um, the allegiance of the spaces comes from the locally existing social context because this district of uh, of Buddha, the green era of Buddha, is a uh, is a very elegant uh, district uh, of the of the capital. So. This, um, this mirroring effect and the insight uh, helps uh, as well the orientation of the, uh, of the spaces. Um, so again, the considering the durability of the materials, um, this um, could be uh, the best or seem to be the best solution uh, that every uh, built furniture, like uh, the reception uh, desk or the benches, uh, are built and it uh, created from uh, from concrete um, uh, reinforced concrete elements. Um, uh, this um, th this is shows another concept uh, of us uh, that we try to eliminate the blue color from the old building except the the water. Uh, in the pools. So for this reason, um, we have to um, uh, we have to uh, ask uh, every uh, products and um, 
and every materials that uh, that they the construction uh, team wanted to build into the building before and um, uh, to see if there is if it contains any blue letter or sign or logo that we should ask them to to eliminate on from the surfaces. Uh, and all mechanical engineering is integrated in the double uh, gable walls uh, and in the crown of the barrel vaulted space. Uh, that decision is ordered to keep the, the interior very clean and very transparent and um, to have this white surface be glowing. Uh, and there's uh, the lighting concept is that the natural light blinds the competitors and the players of the international competition. So we could use only uh, huge openings uh, on the side of the educational uh, pool and to use some um, skylight uh, on the on the vault. Uh, this is the interior concept uh, from top view. That here you can see the distinction between the the white uh, pool um, areas and the surrounding uh, dark and elegant spaces um, that uh, can orient the visitors where they uh, would like to go. Uh, and these are always the again the materials uh, concept. This is the research how we try to uh, to use a monolithic uh, uh, material and color and then put some uh, or more uh, features in it, like the brass uh, system. Um, and this is the ornamentation of the main facade that is that can be uh, can come from the transcription of the wave arches of the water, but uh, but it's at the same time it has an, uh, an analogy of the archaic architecture device because it evokes the geometry of the of the flute that can be seen uh, when you are in front of the building and it rises above uh, us. Um, that's the the double uh, layered gable. So the this um, this wavy uh, surface um, can can be seen from the um, from the inside. Uh, so not um, the goal was not to have a very smooth, uh, huge uh, gable uh, wall, but to make some kind of texture uh, for it. And these are some copper insects that emphasizes the the nice plasticity plasticity of the of the surface. And um, yeah, and with that building, um, we were nominated for Miss uh, Wander Award, but uh, <laughs> we didn't succeed. It. So okay. Uh, that's the end, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for, for your uh, great lecture with all these very detailed and interesting information on... on uh, yeah, sorry, it was a bit long. I thought it would be a little bit shorter. Inspiring, and uh, we, uh, I have several questions, but uh, I would say that our students should be like the first to ask. We have already one question from the uh, from one of our students, so I can read it. Uh, please, how do you think about buildings getting older? Example: the pattern on winery looks like getting dirty easily. Do you take preventive measures uh, or accept it simply as it is? If it's going to be more dirty or, or obsolete during the, the use of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we had an idea with the with this reliefing uh, surface of uh, of our building 
that we wanted to plant uh, some plants inside the green plants uh, into the um, into the deep uh, deep uh, pattern of the of the surface, uh, not to be uh, or not to, to reach this uh, old uh, old looking or or a dirty uh, surfaces. But um, so I think that we have to we always we have we have uh, to struggle this problem uh, with the uh, with the swimming pool. Uh, design uh, and uh, and I always have to care about uh, how the materials um, will hold or will be um, some spots and um, and not um, so we we knew that that it will be not nicely uh, old how do you call it in English olding or old yes yeah. yeah. it's okay. Yeah. 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 So it became old. So that's why we always use um, those kind of materials that uh, that have a very nice effect after some uh, decades. So, for example, the brass uh, of the outside um, of the, these these strips um, uh, is the part of this decision, uh, and um, the gray. Uh, surface is another part of this decision. We had some service to make the building into white because it was the client's uh, um, intention. But then uh, we um, we made some survey and we showed them that if he decided it, to put it into a white, it will be a very ugly uh, building uh, until five or ten years. So I think that we have to uh, we have to live with this um, feature of the of the materials um, and uh, and um, yeah and uh, and uh, always have to take care of that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, perhaps when we are talking about uh, getting older, uh, I mean buildings. Uh, so. Uh, you, you introduced two of, let's say, uh, three, even three uh, renovations or reconstructions of uh, the rock, uh, the, the Buddha Music Hall, which is actually an industrial building before, and, and now the, the swimming pool, which is also an older building. So, um, and all these projects actually uh, are the buildings, like have been the buildings uh, listed or um, somehow protected or. Um, not or how was actually your approach uh, like to uh, to the fact of, of uh, keeping the building like look like an older structure or what was this uh, how, how was the strategy of, of that or how would you uh, describe it so there are actually two questions in one <laughs> yeah. okay. Uh, yes okay so I um, okay as um, uh, we know that there is a um, a kind of regulation uh, um, coming from, uh, or I don't know, the 1964 or something, uh, when the um, the monumentalist decided that you always, when you uh, when you design an old building, a listed building on a monumental building, and you put uh, an addition to it. You always have to make a distinction between the two uh, structure and the two mass, uh, the two building. So you have you always have to act like like you just add something to the old uh, building. And then after another um, um, method came when you eliminate the the distinction between the old and the new, and you have to act like you would be. Uh, an old architect and to make a new building. So I think that the um, that the adaptive reuse uh, that that is a very recent um, um, method uh, to act with listed buildings and with uh, um, with reuse uh, projects is a very interesting way uh, how you can act with these old uh, buildings. Um, so I think that 
according to the function and according to uh, to the use uh, usage of the space, you can have a, a, a more uh, permit or a bigger permit uh, to act with the building or to to make a new sculpture from the materials and um, and from the surfaces and from the for the structures uh, to um, to make the building best uh, suitable for the future uses and not always see the 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 the, the origins uh, of the building. Uh, so that's why I think that together with the um, sorry. Um, so together with this um, um, with this action that you can make distinction between old and the new, uh, you have to make a very nice uh, um, design from the old buildings. Uh, the way that you use it really into the design. Okay, and have they been listed like uh, those three examples? Pardon? List. Uh, if, if, if these are uh, like uh, yes. protected buildings. All of no, them. no, no. Only the the Great Rock was a protected building. Oh. The, yeah, the Fono, the musical was just an old. A uh, rusted zone, um, factory building uh, that was not protected. Okay. Only the rock, yeah, the rock. That's why. So in the rock, we have to keep the original structure and the shell of the rock, and to make a uh, house in the house uh, system, uh, not to destroy any um, pillars or or beams uh, in the protected building. Uh, but I thought that. And that with that building, um, so if you like the building, like we love the Great Rock, we didn't want to demolish or to uh, to damage any part of the building because um, we um, we saw the the verses of the building. So in this uh, with this or from this point of view, we can make uh, a new design for the new functions that can protect the building. Um, okay, then a listed building uh, is damaged or you you don't like the listed building, um, that's maybe a problem. <laughs> so I don't know what, what I would do uh, in that situation. Thank you. Well, th thank you very much for that because uh, something else that I wanted to ask you that's been, uh, that's been like a common theme in your work was what would you consider to be the greatest influence on the projects that you've been busy with? Would you say it's landscape or history or um, just the, uh, the the pure object of it? So, in your opinion, what is the greatest influence on your work? Um, influence. Uh, okay, uh, I thought that we have um, we have a very a strong feature of the office. This is the uh, the the principle that we always would like to make a membrane around the our buildings. So I think this comes from uh, a kind of um, a mystery feeling of architecture that I think that the buildings uh, never uh, stand like two concrete uh, objects in the space or in the context, but it always want to connect. Um, itself to the context, to the people, and to the to the built um, uh, environment or to the natural environment. So that's why we, uh, as you see on all of um, all of our uh, buildings, we always would like to make a blurry uh, membrane around the buildings. So I think this this is the feature that we always follow, and this is the feature that's. Uh, I think has the most uh, impact on the contemporary Hungarian architecture. Uh, for example, uh, with the Bazat Bor Vineries surface that was built in uh, 2010, uh, I think it was the first building that used this um, uh, perforated 
uh, panel on the surfaces um, uh, in front of the, the window. I know that after this building, several buildings used this feature, but as I know, <laughs> in Hungary, we was the first. Okay. So um, the blurring membrane, yeah, that is our feature, definitely. Okay, no, well, thank you very much for that, because we actually have a second question uh, that's just referring back to your first project, The Rock. Um, how did you work with the complexity of the structural construction of, uh, of the rock? Uh, did you uh, work solely on computer or did you make a physical model? Um, how did you work? How did you go about actually mm -hmm. and solving this problem? Well, none of them. You can't imagine what I did. <laughs> I, uh, so the feed them, uh, we were very lucky because as I told, uh, our office was in the in the Budapest Zoo at that time. Uh, it was 10 meters from the rock, the Great Rock. So I went uh, into the construction every morning uh, to make a photo of the of the construction of the the next phase of that day, and then went back to the studio uh, and to try to draw onto the photo. Uh, the polygons that I would like to see the next day. And then in the afternoon, I send them back the photos with the polygons draw onto the surface. And uh, the next day they started to construct. Yeah, of course, uh, it's um, uh, it uh, looks like a joke, it's not. But uh, of course, uh, we had to make an execution plan, uh, construction plan. So we made 3D models of that uh, I spent um, all of my weekends and nights uh, to find out these polygons, how it will be very nice and to cover the, the surface and to follow the exhibition's needs. Um, but uh, the problem was that the construction team couldn't read these plans, couldn't read these drawings because um, so from 3D models, they didn't understand uh, anything. We made a lot of huge uh, amount of uh, paper models. We used the Papekura um, uh, app for that, uh, but really used hundreds. I, I show it in the presentation, but they didn't understand. So then first day I went there and tried to show them what to connect with that, and the second day I came up with this idea with this photo. So. It, it was the lack of communication between the uh, construction team uh, and with the uh, very developed architect with uh, 3D. This is a good example of what architects, what problems architects sometimes yes. face on the site. <laughs> very unexpected problems. The communication. <laughs> yes. Uh, dear students, if you have some more questions, so you should uh, ask them right now because we have some like five minutes left, so <laughs> if there are any, um, meanwhile, or perhaps uh, one more question because um, uh, all the lectures that we have heard till now, like um, on Hungarian architecture, uh, touched in some way the question of ornament and patterns mm -hmm. and uh, and etc. So, I mean, this must be a kind of topic in the Hungarian <laughs> discussion. Uh, and, and I was already asking uh, Attila, our last speaker, uh, how it came, because this is really not a topic in, in our discussion. No, really. So, would you uh, explain this, or uh, do you know any reason why it is like this, that, uh, that the ornamentation and uh, the patterns, and this is the kind of interesting uh, topic in, for Hungarian architects. Hmm. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, no, I don't have any idea. Actually, I didn't realize this feature of the Hungarian architect. So, um, okay, I will look up, look after uh, that. Um, <laughs> but, but we are a little bit like, yes. yeah, I always come out. <laughs> okay, I've never thought that, um, I don't know, maybe it can, uh, maybe it, uh, no, I don't know, because your history is the similar to our history. So I thought that maybe it's because of the communist era when you have to destroy every 
motifs and um, patterns uh, from the surfaces and from the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe um, maybe architects um, uh, are so the, the patterns are missing from the architect's memory. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why they like to make something um, like manufacturing or a tactile tactile um, uh, proportion or or something that's um, that's in a very uh, detailed scale and um, uh, maybe the the surfaces are the ones or for example in our buildings the Laposha binary uh, if we if we kept uh, the the huge monolithic mass uh, on the uh, surfaces plane and we if we, we wouldn't put uh, this pattern on the surface I think that it will be missing the humanistic scale uh, of the building uh, that's for the workers for example who are humans um, and mans so the proportion between the huge masses and between the small humans uh, would be uh, too far uh, from each other and Architects are human, so want to make spaces for nice spaces for humans. Yeah, thank you. I'm wondering if the small architects are not that uh, much humans, perhaps <laughs> it could be the problem. <laughs> anyway, okay, I don't know if we do we have some more questions. Okay, if we do not have some more questions, uh, then they are, I would like to thank you very much for, for this really like uh, wonderful presentation of your work. Uh, and, and actually, you succeeded only to present a very, let's say, a fragment of it because it's huge, your opus. So, congratulations uh, to okay. many uh, successful buildings uh, and um, all the prizes and nominations. I, I would love to hear more about the, the uh, social apartment, for example, for the social housing in, in Budapest, which was uh, uh, yeah. uh, once nominated for, for Miss Van der Rohe, and there are many other examples. Uh, perhaps sometimes in a, in the future. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for for being with us, and uh, I hope we will uh, somehow stay in touch and and uh, proceed with our collaboration. So thank you and have a nice weekend. Thank and you very much. For the Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> have a nice weekend. Not weekend. <laughs> yeah, I do have a few. I, I I didn't have weekend actually. So because of the presentation. So, no, I will have two days weekend. Thank you. Okay, so, wow. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay, have a nice uh, evening as well. And, a social uh, apartment, for nice. example, for the social housing so, in and uh, uh, yeah. uh, It was nice to, to spend uh, uh, two hours with you all, guys. So, see yes. you next Monday. Bye. <laughs> Hopefully, see you.